Hi, I'm Sharon Faldudo. I'm one of the student advisors for English language acquisition students here at Kirkwood Community College. And I'm here today talking about financial aid with Bridget Dusek. Bridget, can you introduce yourself? Well, hello, I'm Bridget Dusek. I am the financial aid operations supervisor here at Kirkwood. And I have been at the college for going on 16 years, all in financial aid. So this is a passion of mine and I'm really happy to be here. Great. So Bridget, real simply, first of all, what is financial aid? Well, uh, financial aid has a lot to it. Um, it's not only um, grants, which is what a lot of students think. It's also um, work study, student loans, and some scholarships. Okay, great. So you said grants, loans, scholarships, and work study. Can you explain the difference between those types of aid? Sure. Um, and I'll also explain how to start the process. Mm -hmm. First, you would need to fill out the, the FAFSA form, which is the free application for federal student aid. And that will determine eligibility for certain types of grants and uh, the type of student loan that a student might be eligible for, and I'll, as well as work study, which is also um, based on the need. Where would I find that FAFSA form? Yes, so you'd want to go to fafsa.gov. Uh, make sure you do that because there are other sites out there that might take a student somewhere um, that isn't the correct spot. So fafsa.gov is the site. Okay, what if I have tried to fill out that FAFSA and I've just found it really difficult? Can I get help from someone at Kirkwood to fill it out? Yes, so in a third floor of Iowa Hall is where we're located, and we would love to see uh, students come to one of our FAFSA help days. And you can find out more information by going to kirkwood.edu slash FAFSA help to sign up for one of the sessions. Okay, so a grant, as I understand it, is free money. Is that right? Money I don't have to pay back. Correct, yes. Uh, grants would be gift aid, so money that is not required to be paid back, um, and scholarships as well. So grants and scholarships would be in, in that gift aid category. And then there are also loans. Loans are money that I do have to pay back. Is correct. that correct? Yes. So anytime you see loan, uh, we with the FAFSA, it would be the direct subsidized and direct unsubsidized loans. Those would be funds that you do have to repay. Can you explain the difference between a subsidized and an unsubsidized loan? Sure. So um, subsidized, we do look at those FAFSA results as well to see if there would be any need that a student um, has for eligibility. Uh, there would be no interest while in school and for a six-month grace period until payments would start after um, they would graduate or leave school. Mm -hmm. And unsubsidized um, is where interest would accrue at the fixed rate, whichever um, or it's changed possibly every year, that interest rate, but it does stay fixed with the loan and it would start as soon as the disbursement happened. So, Bridget, you had mentioned loans and interest rates. I'm not sure I understand about the interest. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, so the Department of Education does give a, a fixed interest rate for the year. And so if a student receives a loan within that year, that fixed interest rate stays with the loan for the life of that loan. It could change the next year, however, with a new loan, and that new loan would have a fixed interest rate for the life of the loan. So it is fixed. It's not variable where it will change with that loan. However, if a student receives multiple loans here at Kirkwood for different years, it could have a different interest rate. I would encourage students to sign up with their, their lender's website so that they can keep track of all of that important loan information because they will provide that so that they know what interest rate they're paying and how much interest might be accruing. So can I take out a loan my first semester of Kirkwood that will cover my entire time at Kirkwood or will I need to take out a new loan every year? With the FAFSA, most aid is for the entire year. So the loan would be split in at least two disbursements. So most of our students will start in the fall and also have a spring disbursement. So it is for the academic year that they would review. Now, sometimes students don't accept their loan their first semester. If they need it their second semester, it is um, usually still available for them to do. I would just encourage them to contact our office to see if we need to revise anything. And do I need to do a new FAFSA every year? 
Great question. Yes, you do. Yes. So it is per academic year. The FAFSA, when you would go to fafsa.gov, will specify, is this for the 22-23 year or is it for the future year? Because right now we do have two financial aid years going on for this current one that we're in, which at Kirkwood covers last fall, spring, and summer. That's the 22-23 FAFSA. For the fall of this year will be the 23-24 FAFSA. Okay, so an academic year is fall, spring, summer. Yes. So it actually runs a different time schedule than, an, than a calendar year. Yes. Okay. Good look at that. Yeah. I know we have some work studies who work here in our office. Can you tell me a little bit more about how work study aid works? Sure. So again, we would need that FAFSA on file to determine eligibility, and the students can go to kirkwood.edu slash work study to see a variety of jobs available, and they would reach out to the supervisor of that area to coordinate um, an interview or discussion of possibly working on campus. Um, we have some off-campus work-study positions as well. I believe it starts around $10 an hour, a little over, and um, it's a great opportunity to work part-time while you're a student. I've heard it's flexible, so if there's a big test coming up, um, work study supervisors usually work with the students so that they can um, have time for, for their studies and work as well. So if I see in my aid package that I have a certain amount of eligibility for work study, I still knew, need to go get a job, right? A work study job. Correct. Okay. Um, at Kirkwood, we don't automatically put the work study award on the financial aid package. Uh, we will Note that you're, the student is eligible for work study, but then they would have to go in and look for a work study position before we put that work study award on. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of students have asked me about and have heard about something called the Last Dollar Scholarship. Can you talk more about that? Yes, so Last Dollar Scholarship, um, that is intended to cover tuition and in institution-wide fees. So it's for programs that lead to like high demand jobs that are where there's a work workforce shortage. Mm -hmm. And so we also have that listed on our website, um, kirkwood.edu slash financial aid, where you can go and look at the Last Dollar Scholarship and all of the programs that would qualify. Um, now, there would be a state deadline for FAFSA. I keep talking about the FAFSA, so that is important. We want you to get your FAFSA done. Um, and that um, July 1st is what we tell students before the, the year starts. So uh, for this fall, July 1st coming up would be the deadline for state grants. And um, yes, yeah, so that it's, it's very popular um, because even though you do need the FAFSA on file, it's not based on the need calculation. It is more based on the program. Oh. And there's other criterion as far as being an Iowa resident. Um, and yes, going going from there. Yep. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And as a reminder, the classes we have in English language acquisition are credit classes. So they do cost Kirkwood tuition. So students who are eligible for financial aid are eligible to use that financial aid to pay for ELA classes. Is that right? That is correct, yes. <clears throat> and I just want to ask, are international students eligible for financial aid? So with financial aid requirements, do you have to be a citizen or eligible non-citizen? Um, so international students would not have the, the federal or state aid um, opportunities. However, scholarships would still be a possibility. Okay, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. If a student happens to have a bachelor's degree from even from another country, are they still eligible for any forms of financial aid? So with a bachelor's degree, <clears throat> even if it is from another country, um, there would be no grant opportunity, federal grant opportunity, I should say. Pell or FSEOG would, would not um, be a part of that financial aid package. However, student loans and possibly state grants, again, depending on that program, um, could qualify. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know you said that the deadline for the scholarship, like the last dollar scholarship is July 1st, mm -hmm. but if I am not trying to use that grant or scholarship and I am applying for financial aid, what if it's the middle of the semester and I find I need money? Is there still time to apply for financial aid? Yes. So with the, the FAFSA, they do have the full year where you can apply. 
So for example, we're in the 2022-2023 um, year, students can still apply until June 30th. That is the harsh deadline or the strict deadline for completing the FAFSA for the year. Um, now with student loans, the student would have to be enrolled in the semester to pay that. So if they do wait till the end, they would be missing that opportunity, but we could look at federal grant eligibility if we needed to go back. Um, but again, that state deadline, they would have missed that. So it is best to complete that FAFSA as early as possible. What's the first day I can do a FAFSA for the next school year? October 1st. Okay. And is that every year on October 1st? It has been for, for a long time. There will be some changes coming up where the Department of Education is going to extend that, where it probably won't be available until January um, for the 24-25 year. So we've got some changes coming up. But right now, um, October 1st has been that first date where they can apply. We do like that because that's when the Kirkwood scholarships are also available. So I like to tell students that October 1st is a very important day. You can do your scholarship application with the foundation as well as the FAFSA. Okay. Does receiving a scholarship affect other forms of aid that you might receive? Well, with federal aid, um, we, the student does have to be within the budget. So we call it the cost of attendance. And so depending on how high the scholarship would be, we might have to reduce some loans. We always reduce, we call it the, the least de desirable type of aid, which loans, of course, you have to repay. Um, so if, if it is coming up to the cost of attendance, if the student cannot go over the cost of attendance, then we would reduce the loan. Okay. Um, is there a chance that a student could lose access to financial aid? Yes. Um, so when a student comes to Kirkwood for the first time, um, they're, it's a fresh start. Uh, at the end of the semester, though, we are going to evaluate the completion of the classes. We call it PACE, as well as the GPA. Our standard is 67% PACE and 2.0 GPA. Those go hand in hand. Um, it's not one or the other. Uh, meaning, you know, you drop a lot of classes and get a 4.0 in that last class, it's both. So if a student does not meet that standard, there could be a warning period, um, or there would be a warning period, um, but if they did a complete drop uh, their first semester, they would go to suspension right away. Um, warning, a student would maintain financial aid as long as um, the next semester they would have to bring their cumulative GPA and PACE back up to the standard. And if not, then the suspension would occur at that point. Um, and if a student does see suspension, which we would notify if, if a student is in that area, um, then there would be no financial aid until it's resolved. Um, resolution would be possibly if they need to pay out of pocket because they're would not have been a circumstance that was beyond their control. Um, they might have to do that to get the standard back up. However, we understand that things happen, emergencies um, if they it, it, or medical, and there is an appeal process. So they can talk to our office if they're in that category and we would be happy to assist them with the appeal process. Okay, thank you for that information, Bridget. Um, did you have any final thoughts you wanted to share with our students? Well, um, I would like to encourage all students who have financial aid questions or needs to come see us, third floor of Iowa Hall. Uh, we are here to help you. We understand that the financial aid process can be complex and we want to make it as easy as possible. So if English is not the first language for students, we have um, a chat feature that we can help with translations and um, we would be happy to, to um, remove that barrier by providing that. We also would like you to come see us if you need FAFSA help. As I've mentioned throughout this uh, discussion, FAFSA is very important to see your eligibility. And we have FAFSA help days, which again, uh, kirkwood.edu slash FAFSA help. And um, you can sign up for a session. We have 12 computers, so we'd like to see it full. So please come see us. And are, if I'm not able to come to campus, maybe I'm taking some of the Zoom classes, can you please share the phone number or the email address or a website? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so please visit uh, kirkwood.edu slash financial aid. Our phone number, 319-398-7600. And um, you should all have a financial aid counselor once you have your FAFSA on file. 
that is located on MyHeb. So please reach out to your financial aid counselor. If you need a Zoom appointment, they'd be happy to get that scheduled. Okay, well, thank you for all of that great information about financial aid and the various ways of paying for college that are available to students. And just, I'm going to repeat what Bridget said several times, fill out your FAFSA at fafsa.gov and there is help available from Kirkwood. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.